How's everybody doing this evening? You're watching Slot Car Mayhem. I'm John, and this will be episode three of the Glendale 65. And today we're going to talk about the overhead lighting system for the layout. Uh, first off, let me wish everybody a very Merry Christmas. Uh, it's uh, the night of Christmas right now. It's about seven o'clock at night. It's been a pretty busy, busy day over here. Uh, as I'm sure everybody else has had a busy day, uh, so uh, I'm going to hope I can get this video out to you tonight. That's uh, what I'm shooting for because I have to go to work early in the morning, so uh, I'm just going to stay up and I'll try to get this out for you. I know it's been a while since I've posted anything, but it's been an extremely busy summer uh, with a lot of construction and stuff at the house. Okay, let's talk a little bit about the lighting system. Uh, first things first, uh, let's take a look at the lighting itself. If you notice, all my lighting is set to red currently and the only reason why I'm using red for this right now is uh, that's a good way for me to simulate that the lights are off basically uh, normally at this point the lights would be off everything else is off I wouldn't even be in the room uh, for lighting uh, I'm just using track lighting right now and the track lighting is inexpensive track lighting I picked up at the big box stores and there's quite a few of them. I still need uh, back up here. I'm still going to run another four to six lights and tie the system back in this way. So I still got more work to do. But for the lighting itself, I'm running Philips Hue. And there's a lot of reasons why I'm running the Philips Hue. Number one is I'm able to set color and brightness and everything uh, either with a Google Home Mini or with uh, what I've got going on here that I want to show you. Uh, I know I've uh, said several times throughout some of the other videos about how I insist on using Android for this and there's a reason for it. ISO, iOS is a great platform and I'm sure if you're just running Smart Race it would be very easy to just hook it and go and you're done. However, um, I'm doing a little bit more than that. Uh, iOS is a closed off platform which is great for security and there's nothing wrong with iOS, don't get me wrong. But Android is much more open source, and uh, I really need the additional functionality. And as far as I know, this system that I'm going to show you will not work on iOS. Uh, it's pretty much exclusive to Android or anything that's very open system, uh, open source type of uh, platform. So what I'm using, uh, running in the background, besides the Smart Race, of course, I'm using an app called Tasker and I'm using several plugins for Tasker and uh, I'm not going to do a full tutorial here there's way too much involved uh, if you guys want to see a full tutorial on how this is done I'll be happy to post a video series about it uh, but this is going to be more of a demo just to show you what I have going on uh, how the Tasker works is it will read the Smart Race screen and when it finds key pieces of text it will act upon it and run certain events it's pretty simple in itself uh, right now everything's off. The uh, overhead screen is off, the track's off, all the devices are off. And these are uh, extra Android, de Android devices I have tied in uh, to the system. These are just power cords. They're not doing anything else. I just leave them hooked up to power all the time. That way they always stay charged. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, fire up the phone here and we'll show you what we have going on. Okay, get my phone fired up and uh, making sure I'm connected to the proper Wi-Fi. Nope, I don't want that. It's hard to look at this sideways sometimes. Okay, yes, I'm hooked up to the proper Wi-Fi. Okay, very good. So what I've got here, you can't really see it here, I know. I've got a one button, and the one button push is pretty effective. I'll go ahead and hit that. You notice all the lights went bright as soon as I hit that. It's starting to kick in the automatic casting for the screen and very shortly here it's going to uh, there it goes it's turning on the screen it's launching smart race and it's uh, these devices here are now waking up so I'm going to go ahead and turn the track on okay tracks on and connected now what I have here, I'm going to move these over so I can try to keep some of the reflective glare off of them. This here is a uh, fast clock that I built in Tasker and I know this is going to be a little hard to see. 
But what I have is I have what time do I want the race to start, how fast do I want the clock to run, uh, and some various other little start stop buttons and indicators showing me what the current uh, day status is. And right now I've got it set on uh, 7 p.m. just before sunset. And my fast clock speed here, if you can see that is 48. And what that means is, uh, basically, if I were to run a 24-hour simulated race, it would take a half hour. So I can toggle these buttons here and change the values as I need to. Here, this is my uh, weather controller right here. And uh, this is just an app called Hue Thunder that I have tied in with the uh, Philips Hue system. So these two here do some pretty cool things when you get with the system. Now if we go back we look at the smart race, my control unit is connected. Uh, you can see right now we are in uh, free practice. That's where we're at. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set up for a new race. And I'll go ahead and start the race. Now we're in race prepare. If you notice, all the lights now have shifted down to green. And what this is, is this is an indicator for everybody else in the room that the track is now in race prepare status and that they're free to approach the track. Eventually, the fast clock controller will have settings in there that I can toggle whether I want it to work or not, or I can change what time I want a race to uh, actually start. And once this goes into race prepare, this will take over. It will announce things like uh, the track is now in prepare mode. Drivers, place your car at the appropriate place on the starting grid. The race starts in 18 minutes. And it will start its countdown. And once its countdown is complete, it will start the race here on the smart race. Okay, but once again, the lighting is in green. The track is in prepare mode. So I'm going to take a car and I'm going to get on the track and I'm going to get ready to set up a race. I'm going to take the uh, camera over and put it on a stand and we're going to run a race and you can see what happens. Okay, we're over here at the track now um, and I'm just going to leave the phone here. I'm going to walk over here in a second. I'm going to grab a controller and I'm going to start the event and it's going to be a 60 lap race and it might be a little boring but please bear with me. You'll be able to see what this does as uh, we go through a standard race. Three, two, one, go! Now, if you notice, all the light colors changed to mimic that of about 7 o'clock at night. Fastest lap by Kohler in the Porsche 917. Kohler in the Porsche 917 did a new fastest lap. And I'm going to try to drive nice and slow. Um, and hopefully the uh, smart race won't over talk me too much. Now what's going on right now is the lights are very gradually changing from one time of day to another. In this case, it's going to go through evening, through sunset, into night. It looks as if it starts to rain very shortly. Okay, now it's calling for rain, so that's going to happen here very quickly. It started raining. You should switch to wet tires immediately. Caution. Now I'm sure you heard the rain start with the thunder and the lightning. Once again, I'm standing behind the phone. Thunder in the Porsche 917 has finished changing the tires. I'm just standing behind the camera right now. I haven't touched anything. And you can see our sky is getting much darker now as it's going into uh, sunset and eventually into night mode.
Okay. Cola in the Porsche 917 has finished refueling. And you notice that the rain and the thunder and the lightning has now stopped automatically. Cola in the Porsche 917 has finished changing the tires. And uh, our sky is continually getting darker as we're going into night mode. Polar in the Porsche 917 did a new fastest lap. Only five laps left. Polar in the Porsche 917 is in the lead. Attention, only one lap left. The race winner is Polar in the Porsche 917. Okay. Now, okay, as soon as the race is finished, you notice the lights automatically went back to uh, full bright. And that tells you the race is done at that point. If we come over here and look, if it was raining, it would have stopped the rain automatically. And uh, if we look here, you can see it has stopped the fast clock. So that's how all that kind of works together. And just for fun, I'm going to do this. And if I go ahead and just hit repeat, it'll go back to the green for prepare. And it'll do the whole thing over and over again. And you can do that all day long. Now, what I am going to do is I'm going to cancel the uh, smart race. And I'll just kill the screen mirror while I'm there. If you notice, the uh, as soon as I kill the smart race, the devices have automatically, uh, they're shutting themselves down right now. So they're uh, clearing themselves out and uh, there you go. They're shutting themselves down and there you go. So it makes it very convenient to uh, go ahead and uh, set up and end a race and having these tied together with it automatically work really, really well. Uh, I can do some other little things like now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to uh, turn off the screen. Slot car TV off. There you go. That turns that off. And I can go ahead and uh, as I'm leaving the room, I can go ahead and turn my lights off. Turn off all lights. Sure. Turning nine lights off. And it'll turn the lights off just fine. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and turn the lights back on now. Turn all lights on. Sure, turning nine lights on. There we go. So we've got everything back on. and uh, But that gives you a pretty good idea what I'm doing with the Philips Hue system so far. And uh, what I really like about it is I like the seamless nature of it. It's very reliable, uh, works very well. Uh, as these stand, all of these are going to be replaced with single board computers. And I will probably keep these two separate just like they are now. Uh, there's reasons for that. Um, they seem to work just fine as long as they're separate. I don't have to have them nested together. And I've got full control and functionality over both of them simultaneously. So I kind of like having them separate. And I'm willing to buy a, an uh, extra single board computer to use. Uh, instead of using just one for both of these, I will use two devices. So I'll have a total of at least three. If you guys want to see a tutorial on this, let me know, and I'll be more than happy to start putting a video series together. Like I said, I'm going to be migrating all these over to single board computers, and uh, when I do that, that'll be a great time because I'll probably be rewriting all the code to begin with. And none of it is really difficult. It's all very, very simple. So uh, just hit me up if you guys want to see a tutorial on that, and uh, that's the way that works. But other than that, that's what we have, and that's... Uh, the Carrera, the Smart Race, Android, Philips Hue, and Tasker all working together as one unit. And uh, when the guys come over and they want to run, I tell you, they love it. I think it's just the greatest thing since sliced bread. So uh, if you guys got any questions about it, let me know. And uh, other than that, uh, this will wrap up as episode three of the Glendale 65. So if you guys got any questions, feel free to hit me up. Other than that, keep the guide flag in the slot, and you have a great night. Thanks for watching.